Welcome to the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Chris Kane, the one who joins us this morning uh, for Off the Press. Chris, it's good to have you join us. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. And happy birthday to you, Mercy. May God continue to bless you and all that you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I think Thank we you. have to <laughs> add um, uh, <laughs> Pastor, Pastor, um, Pastor Chris. Pastor, Pastor, to your name. No, uh, you know that all Chris are pastors. Pastor oh, yes. Chris are here. Pastor, yes. Chris are so even even my pastor in uh, even my pastor in Port Harcourt is Pastor Chris Ugo. Oh, we are all men of God. Yes, mm. yes, yes. Uh, but, but Chris, before we go into the the papers, I I believe that there's some old narrow notes that you may have wanted to discard. Um, can you send them this way? Uh, or can you send them this way? Those of you that are owing me, this is the time to give me back my money. <laughs> 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 for mercy, but it, it cannot come at a more timely uh, period than now. Her birthday, because I've been here to say no naira, naira day now. Mercy, so we must celebrate. So. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> Chris. I mean, it's so good to have you on the show. It's always a delight. But let's uh, quickly run through the papers this morning. We we'll start off with the punch, and of course, you can predict what the headlines will be talking about this morning. And Mefili. Uh, finally bows to pressure, says, old Naira notes illegal tender. I mean, I like how the punch, you know, captions it. MFLA finally bows to pressure, says, old Naira notes legal tender. CBN directs banks to accept and disburse old 1,500 and 200 and redesigned bank notes. Disobeying court order undermines rule of law, constitution, and democracy. That's what the MBA president is quoted to say. And then you have the AGF, Central Bank of Nigeria governor, don't need Buhari's directive to obey Supreme Court, says the presidency. Now, I mean, it's a question that I, we have constantly raised as to whether we need, if the Supreme Court is totally, and if we say the Supreme Court is supreme and is the final uh, you know, court of the land, then do we need another directive? Do we need the president? Do we need uh, the CBN, you know, whether as a person or as an organization to put a word as to the ruling of the Supreme Court? I can't wait to share your thoughts, Chris Kainde. Uh, federal government probes thefts in $1.1 billion oil well, Nigerian to pay 1,000 NIN fee for passports. I mean, that's a lot of stress right there. Federal government shorts Lagos airport runway and diverts international flights. And uh, just before we move away from that, you say, Tunibu has no preferred candidate for National Assembly leadership. Uh, that's according to the vice president, uh, vice president elect. I was going to say vice presidential candidate. Well, he's elected now. And that's it this morning on the punch. All right, let's go over to the next uh, papers. And uh, of course, we'll look at... Um all right, we'll look at the, 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 the Guardian up next. Um, Buhari absolves self as CBN finally obeys Supreme Court. Before the CBN's um, secular or press release was uh, <coughs> excuse me, shared, the presidency, in quote, released a, a statement signed by Malam Garba Shehu saying that the President Buhari had not um, uh, told them not to obey the court. Um, and the writers there uh, say it all. Uh, Africa, the first window caption, Africa's energy crisis raises fresh health environmental concerns. Uh, 10th Assembly leadership, I have no preferred candidates, says Tinubu. CBN debunks report of a mere feeling plotting against Tinubu. They actually put up a, a, a tweet um, with, a, a, with a, a stamp of fake news on that, uh, the Nation newspaper headline. You know, it put out a tweet and then put out a statement saying it was fake uh, news. Bonu Yobe risk acute food shortage, World Bank alerts. Okay, so those are some of the stories on the front page of The Guardian. Rhodes Viva remains LP candidate. Party's legal team clarifies uh, election materials. We have nothing to hide. Uh, INEC uh, chair tells LP legal team. 60 lawyers stormed the INEC office yesterday as members of the OB LP, uh, that Obidati LP legal team, 60 of them, uh, maybe dwarfing. The one that uh, the ones representing the uh, other candidates. Well, let's quickly take a look at the Daily Trust newspaper. Uh, it talks about the old Naira note saying, "Old Naira notes legal tender again." That's what the Central Bank of Nigeria is quoted to say. And then you find you have no reason not to comply with the Supreme Court judgment, Buhari. Uh, okay, banks struggle to meet customers' needs, and pensioners decry Naira scarcity. Say we're in pain. 
It's good news, traders and POS operators, <laughs> especially POS operators. Tunibu's election, rejection of religious uh, hatred, sectarian politics, that's what the president is saying. Nigerians to pay 1,000 euro fee for NIN integration verification. Okay. And uh, you also find fire destroys 100 shop stores in Kanu Singer Market. That's what we talked about on our top trending and national assembly leadership. I have not endorsed anyone, says President-elect. We have nothing to hide, INEC chair tells Obi's lawyers. And seven states to watch ahead of the governorship polls. Why we're afraid, residents are quoted to say, and how to avert crisis. This is according to experts and CSOs. Well, um, yeah. Yeah, so we'll take the nation very quickly before business day. Uh, just a few from the paper. CBN OK is 1,500 uh, Naira old notes after Buhari's rebuke. President, I never asked in BFLA Malami to flout uh, Supreme Court judgment. APC to decide uh, uh, zona, zoning rather of National Assembly offices uh, after elections. Uh, ADP and NPP, uh, ZLP, others, six others endorse Somolu. Uh, Lagos runway shut for repairs. That's Mutala Mohammed International uh, Airport. Flights will not be affected. So over here, appeal uh, court reserves judgment in a delicate suit to high energy cost affecting manufacturing, says uh, MAN. That's the uh, Manufacturing or Manufacturers Association of Nigeria. Well, we'll just quickly run through um, the business day and just take one or two. Then we have Chris Kende wanting to share his thoughts. And on the business day, you find the cash chaos crunches farmers okay buhari's 13 trillion or 13 million agri jobs on the threat and then inex budget for beavers surpasses market costs by 30 percent nigeria's biggest drug market six relief from fx pain inex grants labor party access to inspect election materials now these are some of the headlines we find this morning on the business day all right, uh, Chris Kane, I want to uh, over to you. Thanks again for your time. Uh, let's start off with this um, uh, uh, sort of sort of confusing situation where Nigerians have been saying, "Look, President Buhari, give an order, give a marching order to the CBN to obey the Supreme Court uh, uh, ruling." And yesterday, the Supreme Court, uh, the presidency coming out, not the president, but the presidency coming out through Malam Garba Shehu saying, "See, Mr. President has never said to." to uh, Emir Feli or Abu Kamal Amiyesi and the Attorney General and the Minister of Justice don't obey the Supreme Court. So we are not part of it, which was uh, surprising to some people. I don't know if you can understand the surprise of uh, many. Um, but the rest is history. The CBN has located. What are your thoughts? Yeah, well, thank God the nightmare is over because this is just a nightmare, not just um, ordinary. Um, and uh, for the records, the CBN don't need the directives of the president to implement the decision of the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is the final call of the land, and immediately it makes a decision, it takes a decision, so shall it be, and that's what it's supposed to be. So waiting for the president um, to give a directive to the central bank, um, uh, to me, um, is just like um, an affront of the um, judgment of the Supreme Court. With this have taken close to about 10 days, point of 11 days or thereabouts, since this judgment was um, issued by the Supreme Court, that you expected that the executive uh, of which the uh, Central Bank is part of supposed to have obeyed. But is it not curious enough that it was just a few minutes or an hour after the president has issued that statement that the um, Central Bank of Nigeria on this one came out to issue the statement that it has become a legal. So, uh, it's so obvious that where this decision is coming from is that not that is not that of Sir Trump, but that of the president. Don't forget the president in his, in his address, as all the ones that we talking talking about this issue, has said, "I directed, I directed the central bank, I directed the central bank." So holding up um, to the fact that it is his, he is the one issuing the order. So um, at times I just wonder what people say. Oh, let's do this to the MEP, let's prosecute it. Yes. He, 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 he had a, a, a program, a, a, um, to me, uh, a policy which is good, but it's so, it's so obvious that implementation was his problem. And that is, if you don't know where you're going to, it's always good to go back to where you're coming from. 
But instead of going back to where he was coming from, he continued going to uh, on a journey of no return, uh, just a, a, a journey where he does not even have a destination. So, um, but I, I have said it that um, the president, what he did or what he didn't do, uh, is tantamount to what he has always done, and this is not the first time. We have seen instances where the president has disobeyed Supreme Court um, uh, judgments on several. We saw what happened with Ezazaki. We saw what happened with. Uh, uh, Dasuki, we saw what happened with Nam de Kanu, and everybody kept quiet. So now that it has, he has to, it's affecting, it's affecting the governors. Now all of them are now shouting, "Oh, the president is not being." What of the ones that have been here in the past? But I, good reasoning have, um, um, to me, have come to sustain here, and then we will see what will happen from today. But what I, I continue to ask is that, you, do you know how many Nigerians have died because of this policy? It's just that we don't keep data in this country. If there are countries that keep data, you'll be shocked by the number of people that have been affected, poverty, death, or people that even died for, uh, from health-related issues because they could not. Because if you go to the, but there were instances, you remember what happened, at, I think it was in Kano, so, where a pregnant woman died because the government could not pay the money they paid. They said that it was that they were waiting for their last until they found that they were not going to treat the woman. The pregnant woman died. And died. So that is part of the problem with various. But I hope this wouldn't, I don't know, but I hope this wouldn't, uh, wouldn't happen again. Uh, we have to 31st of December year to face up the old Naira notes. And um, and that is what it is. And I hope that the banks will start accepting and release money as quickly as possible. Well, um, Chris, let's move away from that and look at the Punch newspaper this morning. I I'd like you to, you know, react on this. How do you feel about the fact that Nigerians are expected to pay a thousand Naira uh, for verification of the NIN. Now, uh, I want you to also think about the fact that, you know, this body uh, is actually a government agency. And so when you say verification, does it mean that uh, there's some sort of fraud? What's the essence of the verification and why uh, should Nigerians be paying a thousand naira? To me, that is double taxation as well as I'm concerned because if you realize that some, even when the initial one was done, that they said, um, when you not came, when the uh, what do you call it, the telecom uh, company are saying that oh you have to verify your number, you have to do this. Some of these telecom companies also collected money. I know one telecom company that I had to, after trying it on my own, I couldn't. I had to, I had to go to the telecom company, and I was charged about I think I was charged two thousand naira, two thousand five naira, uh, two thousand five hundred naira for them to be able to verify that, and I paid. There are businesses where people were going for to use it for passport for using and resting, and they had to pay again. Now, why should I be paying for the verification of my name? And that is the problem with policy about this country. People just come up with policies and look at ways of exploiting Nigeria. I have been of the school of thought that all our so-called um, um, what do we call it now uh, identity cards should be collapsed into one. Why will I have separate um, passport, separate um, uh, driver license? Um, you, you want uh, this thing if you want um, what is it now NIN you go, you go to for, for BVA for bank they call it they say why don't in most countries in practically all countries everything is collapsed into one and that is how they get a good database because if anything happens or whatever it is you commit a crime you are traceable then here we want you to have identity ident if, if you go to the whatever to what's it the FIRS and uh, even the loss um, uh, what they got now uh, the revenue service they say you should they, they, they also want to I want to give you a, that does not work but to me this is this is highly unacceptable why should I be paid one thousand naira for the education at the point they were saying that uh, for the uh, was it for in, in, uh, international what they call now the international what they call that that it has a time frame yes that can be renewed but you don't ask me you don't you don't come and tell me that I have to pay again. For verification, one thousand naira for verification of the name. For what? What? What is the sense of that? I think the relevant minister in charge, who should be the minister of uh, minister of finance, as also the minister of um, communication and digital economy, should be able to come out and verify that. But to me, that is very, very unattainable, and this is just taking Nigerians for a ride. All right, Chris, thank you very much. Uh, let's uh, go on to some other stories. Um, on the front page of The Nation, the paper tells us that uh, the governor of Lagos State has received an endorsement of six political parties, uh, ADP, NNPP, and ZLP. NNPP is a party of uh, uh, 
uh, Rabbi Musa Kwanko. No, so nine. Eight. Nine. No, six. Nine. Okay, the paper, paper says six. Uh, you're saying nine. Uh, six orders. A, A, D, P, N, M, it's, sorry, C, sorry, I apologize. I apologize. I apologize. Yes. Sorry. Yeah, six nine. others. That makes it nine. True, truly, that's, that's the case. So, so what are your thoughts on this? Do you think this will have any reflection on the... Uh, uh, on the elections uh, result, government election results come uh, Saturday or Sunday? I don't think, I don't know, I, I bet I really doubt. We have to go back and what these political parties, what was their numbers at the last presidential election and uh, National Assembly election in Lagos. So if you go and look at and calculate all their numbers, uh, they have the votes they got, that, that will tell you whether they have, a, they don't have any impact on the election coming up on Saturday. So there's nothing wrong in endorsement. If they think that the governor is doing well, fine, it's all well and good. But I've always known that most of these political parties don't have any interest in contesting. They just bear the name. All they are interested in is trading away um, uh, the, their tickets when it comes to election like this. It's only serious-minded parties that... Um, the one I'm even surprised about is the NM, NM, uh, NMVP, right? Mm. Uh, because now, for me, as far as we're concerned, there are only, only four basic... Um, major parties in Nigeria, which is the APC, PDP, Labour Party, and NNPP. All the other ones seems to be flowing. But there's nothing wrong in it. But whether this is going to bring a level of um, votes, more votes for the candidates of the APC, I don't know how that is going to fight. I really doubt it. But as I, I will say, what I say is that the dynamics of similar Saturday's election may be different from what we saw at the presidential election. It may be some kind of changes, um, you know, the policies can last say. I think that most of the political parties are going to fight, especially the governors, sitting governors uh, in most of these states, we fight to the last blood of their blood to make sure that people really come out and vote for them. Um, so, but let's see how this pans out on. My own challenge is, especially in area like Lagos, this issue of security. And I hope that the security agents um, are doing what they need to do. Uh, you saw what came out yesterday. We had the Nigerian army has to come out to debunk um, a story that was um, um, that was written and uh, published by a newspaper, uh, one newspaper, the Nation, in fact, and some other and online. Where the military was accused of backing one political party or political candidate, with the fact that it was even you know, that the, it was even said that the governor of Central Bank has released about five hundred million naira to a particular. Um, uh, Governorship candidate in Lagos. The army came out to debunk that. The central bank also came out to debunk that. But this is time of politics, and you know, politicians are their way. But I just hope that the election on Saturday will be far, far better than what we had uh, on the 25th of March, where Nigerians voted, right? Their results were not transmitted, especially with the data of the presidential election. And Enik is coming out to tell us now that over 170,000 polling results have been transmitted and have been uploaded. And I asked, what happened? Why didn't you do that before the, as the cost, the cost of announcing the results? But let's wait and see what happens on Saturday. I think that um, some sort of, um, uh, something needs to be said maybe by the NUJ or by somebody about um, some of these stories floated by, by the papers, especially the papers that have um, some affinity with a, a candidate or two, you know, a number of them out there. Um, the, the, in order to ensure that there's some sort of sanity um, within within the polity, especially as far as the ethics of journalism are concerned. Yeah, that's why uh, personally, um, if I'm uh, if I'm in charge of certain TV stations and also some some radio stations as a professional, there are certain papers I will not review. I will not review. I will not ask to be reviewed. This time of politics, maybe after politics. Because as most of our colleagues have become instant politicians by their way, their manners, and they throw them edges to, to, to out of the window to dogs, um, just to be able to please their political godfathers, ownership, and the rest of them. So uh, when you see certain, there are certain newspapers you pick up in the morning, and you see you see that their editorial policy has changed, and they're basically all out. Not only even. Not only this, but even television stations, there are some television stations that are owned by politicians, radio stations that are owned by politicians, and they use that. You know, the smart thing most of the politicians, what they've learned in the past 10, 20 years is that they've known the power of the media. And most of them invest in the media. 
for whatever reason so that they can use it when it comes to their politics and they use it effectively. So um, some of these editorials, and I was thinking and I've been thinking that, um, you know, Bon, you know that just few few days ago, um, the NBC issued um, a warning to all TV stations um, and radio stations, broadcast stations, warning them on an issue of politics um, that they should, they, they should be very careful of the, the sanction. Although that's, I totally disagree with them on that threat. There's no reason for anybody to threaten any radio or TV station, or any broadcast station or the broadcast. If you have any issue with them, then you go to the relevant uh, authority, which is born. Or if you agree, you go to take them to court rather than just issuing threat every time and trying to sanction people with 5 million naira, 10 million naira. But um, it is obvious, as I said, that some of our colleagues have taken a stand. And that in itself is not ethical at all. It should be as neutral as possible. But it is not only in Nigeria. You remember that <laughs> CNN is pro Democrat and Fox is pro Republican in the United States of America. So it's not only here. In as much as they don't make it as glaring, but our own people here, the way they go about it, it doesn't, it doesn't sound well. And doesn't look good. Okay, um, I'd like us to also look at uh, uh, another paper that's still the punch where the president-elect says he has no preferred candidate for the National Assembly leadership. Uh, I'd like to ask you if you think that this is a statement of truth or it's just a mere statement. I'm sure you said you didn't believe in that. You said believe that kind. That's what they say, is it? <laughs> you they laugh at me. Yeah. You said believe that guy. <laughs> so, so, you know, they've they been having some meetings. They've been having some meetings, uh, <laughs> yeah. I think, yesterday or so. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Messi, my politician goes, you don't say today is your birthday. My politician goes, ah, Messi, your politician, you know that today is your birthday. You say, Messi, see, your birthday is actually tomorrow. It's not today. You will be saying today is your birthday. You listen at the politician goes, you say, no, not tomorrow. And he will show you every evidence to be Say, in the time, in the way you were born, and your mother, they didn't calculate it well. And can you imagine? A politician, a young politician will come and tell you good money. Better go outside and check whether his money actually online. Because if you say good money, and you try to rush him out to go to work, and realize you need to come out and drive out, and realize that three is just 3 a.m., you're on your own. So, don't believe these politicians. How can they, he say that he doesn't have any He has a candidate. He don't just doesn't want to say anything. They're already, they're already sharing the offices. And that is it. That is where it's done. The fact is that there are going to be a lot of realignment within the National Assembly because now that the president is coming from the southwest, it's obvious that the House of Representatives speaker will not come from the south. So Bajabi Amila will not return um, return to the uh, as speaker of the house. That is busy. Then also from the north, I doubt if the uh, Senate president will be sealed, um, uh, uh, assigned to the north. Being that the vice president is also coming from the north, probably has to come to this. I, I, I don't know which part of the south to south it comes to put it But it is time, it's high time, um, uh, high powered politicking going on and the rest of them. But for anybody to tell you that he's not interested, if it doesn't, if it's not interested in who becoming, won't you remember what happened um, at the first time of um, President Muhammad Buhari? We are Saraki out of no and give him serious problem in the first four years as a senior president. So definitely, I don't believe him. But that is the way they talk. So don't just believe our uh, politicians. Mm. I think we can also uh, remember the uh, the battle to uh, make sure Femi Bacha Biamila was made the speaker of the House exactly. of Re The first exactly. part one yeah. and then part yeah. two. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So mm -hmm. basically, you're saying Messi can't take that to the bank. All these politicians are saying, mm -hmm. no pun intended. No, no, no. No it, pun intended. In fact, <laughs> it should not even take it to any bank. Even if it's just uh, all this, uh, not even a CBS bank. Not bank. Make it not take a good deal. This is <laughs> bank. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Chris, thank you so much for your time. We have to say goodbye to you now. Um, uh, we'll be reaching out to you so we can we can continue the celebration uh, of the air. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but we're once, counting once down again, to Saturday. Happy birthday. Yes, yes. Happy birthday to Mexico. Thank you. Yes. Be too late in the morning of the month of March. So happy uh, birthday to you. Thank you. This thank month. You. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chris. Thank you. Uh, Chris Kenewando is a chartered arbitrator, okay. UK trained chartered arbitrator. He's been a guest uh, on Off the Press. So we'll take a break. When we come back, we have more discussions. Definitely. Uh, please stay with us.